are these people? Here's a little bit of levity in between because we had some earlier with Laura Kay and that was pretty heavy stuff. Hamilton Nolan, college is an education in bullshit. Because the value of universities is revealing how they themselves suck. <laughs> Interesting, yep. right? So we've got a stop learning and return to class. Thanks to Getty Images. Right. The nicest that thing image is just yeah. Like his Billy Club is in a inopportune position. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, hey, I didn't do that. <laughs> no, a, mate, no. Family oh show. God, family show. The nicest thing that can be said about college Sorry, as an institution children. is that it gives the kids able to afford it an appropriately sheltered place to live out their prime criminal years in an environment where they will not be as harshly prosecuted for their various youthful hijinks as they would be if they were not in college. Mm. That is a whopper of a sentence. And you want to talk about privilege. I thought, that is I thought college was where you just went and had fun for a while and then did the triple indie at the end. That is privilege in that one college? sentence right there. Yeah. All right. The not nice thing that can be said about colleges is that it, as an institution, at least as it exists in America, is that it is one of the most distilled expressions of the, of the rot at the heart of how this country chooses to function. Take a public good, higher education, have Republicans choke its public financing, Democrats too, privatize it, make the ability of people to have a decent life dependent on buying it, and then run it like a business in the sense of creating lavish tiers for very rich customers and inflating prices to extortionate levels and attacking labor and climbing happily into bed with some of the most sociopathic billionaires the world has ever produced. Again, Rifters. Just as many Democrats as Republicans. Sorry, not sorry. They're kind of grifters. But then they'll turn around and call podcasters grifters. Yeah. While, while there are legitimately yeah. important stories to be told about elite colleges and universities, in particular their sly inclusion in the class war in the form of the adjunctification of their faculty and the way that they function to groom a superficially diverse cast young people for their roles as the next generation of class war overseers at McKinsey and Wall Street and the halls of politics. Those are not the stories that most cultural commentators like them, like them to tell them about. Uh, I'm sorry. Those are not the stories that most cultural commentators like to tell about them. That changes the meaning a little bit. Instead, we get an obsessive and frankly bizarre focus on the rhetorical and political fashion choices of a bunch of 20-year-olds who are held up as the collective children of Omelas that all of society can come together to crucify so that sad adults can feel better about themselves. Not this, that there's anything wrong with that. Well, this weird tick which pervades the media like an infectious disease means that college does serve one more useful function. If you listen to people talk about it, you can very quickly tell who's not worth listening to at all. Again, Hamilton Nolan, how things work. It's very easy to be annoyed by college kids. After all, they're young and healthy and have their whole lives ahead of them. And the rest of us have already chosen our dreary paths, which we regret. Speak for yourself. Arithmetic tells you that college students have not had as many years to learn things as older people have had, so sometimes they act with brashness and overconfidence of youth. This is trivial observation about the nature of the human lifespan. It's not a weighty subject for political commentary. To the extent that any writer or politician or intellectual treats it as a matter that rises to the level of public importance, or more absurdly that reflects some new sociological trend that's not been present for the last several thousand years, the commentator in question is at best a fool and at worst a fraud. If you were to take the 500 members of the U.S. media who talk about college campuses the most and cast them all into the sea, the overall quality of our national discourse would rise significantly because at least it would contain a lower amount of pure goading distraction. And there certainly is one 
group that is focused on controlling the narrative at college campuses through the media. The other group is focused on controlling the narrative at college campuses through administration and law and rules and committee. But it's bipartisan. College campuses are little bubbles that exist outside of the quote-unquote real world. That is, of course, how they are designed. Getting mad at college kids for this fact in the form of criticizing them for being sheltered is sort of an upscale version of getting mad at prison inmates for being in prison. We put them there. That's where they are. What else are they supposed to do? Political protests on college campuses are set pieces, yes, but that's a very deliberate result that was engineered, not by college students, but by their institutions. To whatever college kids are, to whatever extent college kids are able to break out of the comfortable trap of camp campus activism and connect their protests to the wider world, I salute them. And should we all? He's he's very smart for sure. Um, sometimes he's a little, little opportunistic and optimistic, but. Not opportunistic, but blindly optimistic. Um, and a little blind, in my opinion, or or romantic, romanticized about how labor is actually in this country and how it works. Seen from this perspective, the protest encampments in support of Gaza that are sweeping elite college campuses across the nation and being ruthlessly crushed by riot cops at the same rate, as we just saw, are valuable arenas of public education, more valuable than anything these kids will learn in the classroom. That's one of the reasons I brought this article, because I love what he wrote right there. Those protest encampments and what they're learning and the solidarity and what they're learning from culturally from the people that they're sitting around, that's an education. It's more valuable than what they're learning in the classroom, and I totally agree with him there. And why I brought this. These experiences will teach these kids some of the most important truths that they will need to know to accurately assess the way that America operates. That the polished people in charge of things are often merciless dictators at heart. That awful atrocities will be tolerated as soon as they can be ignored. And that one millimeter beneath the smile of the boss lurks gritted teeth and a determination to call the cops to break your head open if you don't listen. Yeah. I'm to have young people set out to protest the deaths of tens of thousands of civilians and then be met by hysterical repression from the same institutions that have been tasked with making them good citizens is one of the best lessons I can imagine. It's an act of wiping off the makeup to reveal the pig beneath. We wouldn't want that pig to be concealed forever, would we? Just as important as the tear gas and the billy clubs and the administrations canceling their graduation ceremonies are the words of those condemning the college kids for doing all of this. All of those words from the somber cable news hosts pretending to fret about chaos with their million dollar paychecks, from the insincere lobbyists trying to smear human rights as anti Semitism from their million dollar paychecks. From the once friendly politicians afraid to embrace obvious moral judgments due to the naked demands of empire, thanks to the more thanks to the paychecks coming from APAC and other institutions like super PACs, from the university administrators who turn from gentle friends to militant gremlins when the invisible line into actual disruption is crossed, reveal the contours of the bullshit that envelops all of this. We send kids to college to learn, but not to understand. To become independent, but not independent-minded. To become responsible, so long as that sense of responsibility does not extend to everyone else in the world. Sometimes something so bad happens that it causes an uprising that breaks the whole facade. Vietnam was that for my parents' generation, and Gaza is that now. And there will be other things to come. People who think that this is all wrong just show that they have never really understood what education is in the first place. Education is vital. College is dumb. A fabulously expensive ticket to the middle class that's lorded over by middle managers who love giving speeches in goofy gowns 
and take their orders from hedge fund managers who suck their fortunes out of the year olds declaring themselves the king of the world, like two year olds. Uh, out of the pockets of the working class, I missed the line. Out of the pockets of working class and splash their names on campus buildings like two year olds declaring themselves king of the world. Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. The ability to make a good living in the higher ed industry is inversely proportional to the amount that you actually give a shit about education. Universities are at best a grand soaring ground that divides those who can and cannot see through this bullshit. I'm sorry that a lot of kids may get kicked in the teeth in the coming weeks to learn this, but the adults who aren't smart enough to see that the kids are right are a much, much greater tragedy. And unfortunately, they call themselves the adults in the room, and those are the ones that are running the fucking country. As Misty Winston famously said, We're fucked. Yep. yep. So, Hamilton is an independent journalist, of course. He also writes with In These Times magazine, as well as others. He publishes um, op-eds and bylines. Um, really big fan. Um, don't always agree with him. He wrote an article that, that infuriated me about how you talk to Trump and how you would interview Trump, which is, of course, how Trump would never sit for an interview, and he would never sit for that. That you make him uncomfortable and you sweat and you bully him and you treat him like he like he treats everybody, except he would never sit for that. He'd just get up and walk out. And we both we all know that. Um Ooh. and a little blind in my opinion, or or romantic, romanticized about how labor is actually in this country and how it works. Seen from this perspective, the protest encampments in support of Gaza that are sweeping elite college campuses across the nation and being ruthlessly crushed by riot cops at the same rate, as we just saw, are valuable arenas of public education, more valuable than anything these kids will learn in the classroom. That's one of the reasons I brought this article, because I love what he wrote right there. Those protest encampments and what they're learning and the solidarity and what they're learning from culturally from the people that they're sitting around, that's an education. It's more valuable than what they're learning in the classroom. And I totally agree with him there and why I brought this. These experiences will teach these kids some of the most important truths that they will need to know to accurately assess the way that America operates. That the polished people in charge of things are often merciless dictators at heart. That awful atrocities will be tolerated as soon as they can be ignored. And that one millimeter beneath the smile of the boss lurks gritted teeth and a determination to call the cops to break your head open if you don't listen. Yeah. And to have young people set out to protest the deaths of tens of thousands of civilians and then be met by hysterical repression from the same institutions that have been tasked with making them good citizens is one of the best lessons I can imagine. It's an act of wiping off the makeup to reveal the pig beneath. We wouldn't want that pig to be concealed forever, would we? Just as important as the tear gas and the billy clubs and the administrations canceling their graduation ceremonies are the words of those condemning the college kids for doing all of this. All of those words from the somber cable news hosts pretending to fret about chaos with their million dollar paychecks, from the insincere lobbyists trying to smear human rights as anti Semitism from their million dollar paychecks from the once friendly politicians afraid to embrace obvious moral judgments due to the naked demands of empire thanks to the more, thanks to the paychecks coming from APAC and other institutions like super PACs from the university administrators who turn from gentle friends to militant gremlins when the invisible line into actual disruption is crossed reveal the contours of the bullshit that envelops all of this we send kids to college to learn, but not to understand. To become independent, but not independent-minded. To become responsible, so long as that sense of responsibility does not extend to everyone else in the world. Sometimes something so bad happens that it causes an uprising that breaks the whole facade. Vietnam was that for my parents' generation, and Gaza is that now. 
and there will be other things to come. People who think that this is all wrong just show that they have never really understood what education is in the first place. Education is vital. College is dumb. A fabulously expensive ticket to the middle class that's lorded over by middle managers who love giving speeches in goofy gowns and take their orders from hedge fund managers who suck their fortunes out of the year-olds declaring themselves the king of the world, like two-year-olds. Uh, out of the pockets of the working class, I missed the line, out of the pockets of working class and splash their names on campus buildings like two-year-olds declaring themselves king of the world. Mark Zuckerberg. The ability to make a good living in the higher ed industry is inversely proportional to the amount that you actually give a shit about education. Universities are at best a grand soaring ground that divides those who can and cannot see through this bullshit. I'm sorry that a lot of kids may get kicked in the teeth in the coming weeks to learn this, but the adults who aren't smart enough to see that the kids are right are a much, much greater tragedy. And unfortunately, they call themselves the adults in the room, and those are the ones that are running the fucking country. As Misty Winston famously said, We're fucked. Yep. So, Hamilton is an independent journalist, of course. He also writes with In These Times magazine, as well as others. He publishes um, op-eds and bylines. Um, really big fan. Um, don't always agree with him. He wrote an article that that infuriated me about how you talk to Trump and how you would interview Trump, which is of course how Trump would never sit for an interview, and he would never sit for that. That you make him uncomfortable and you sweat and you bully him and you treat him like he like he treats everybody. Except he would never sit for that. He just get up and walk out, and we both we all know that. Um, it's graduation season too, as. Gamer so eloquently points out, and as Hamilton did, and they're starting to cancel graduation ceremonies. Why? Because they're afraid of what these students are going to say on stage, and they can't stop them. So they're literally just canceling the fucking ceremonies. It's, it's unreal, and it's completely not a surprise at all. Again, if you can hook up Jesse Jet, co-fee.co-fee.com slash Indie News Network. That goes right to a PayPal account that is set up exclusively for Jesse's uh, uh, new equipment. He needs a new laptop bad, man. We really appreciate it. Any help that you can give us.